We Saw a Thing is a movie podcast about remakes and sequels. We, we saw a thing and talked about it. This week, the guys talk about Flipper. The following conversation has been edited for brevity. I bet you have watched some movies about a marine mammal. Yeah, I watched them. I did watch them. Did it upset you at all that they kept calling it a fish? It's like, yo, it's 1996 at this point. Why are we still calling dolphins fishes? There was a lot to not enjoy about either of these two movies. <laughs> I totally disagree with what you're saying. You Wait, did you enjoy them? I didn't hate them. I didn't go so far to be like, there is no... If we're talking the Dr. Doolittle spectrum, at no point in either one of these films did I feel Dr. Doolittle spectrum. <sighs> yeah, I didn't quite get to Dr. Doolittle, but the first one was real painful. I didn't enjoy that at all. Did it, it felt to me like they went out and shot a bunch of documentary footage for a, for a documentary about sea life and then went, I don't know, we could kind of like tack a story in here with some of this footage we've already shot. It was really disjointed. I didn't really enjoy any of the characters. It was fully a third into the movie before the dolphins even introduced. It didn't make sense to me why it, the movie was called Flipper when he was such an incidental part of the whole thing. I mean, that dolphin got rode a lot. A lot. I felt terrible for that animal. Yeah, and apparently people didn't believe that that was a thing that actually happened and wasn't just like visual effects. So. No. Well, the thing is, at one point, they speared a dolphin. A dolphin is beached. And I was like, no, that's fake. That's got to be fake. But then you see the blowhole open up and it is totally Dr. Doolittle territory of you 100% abuse that animal, which was hard to watch. Yeah. If for a movie that seemed very clear about wanting to talk about how precious marine life is, they really didn't seem to mind abusing that dolphin, which was really cringy. That kid riding that dolphin around and that dolphin struggling so hard to move him. Like, here's the thing. When I say I didn't mind these films, it's because I felt they were very easy watches. I was invested in both stories. The, in fact, the 1996 story is a really good movie if you remove the story of a dolphin in it. Like, you remove the dolphin altogether... It's a great coming of age story. Yeah, it's it's definitely got some some elements of that. I don't mind. I've I never mind Elijah Wood as a, an actor. He's pretty good, even when he was a kid. So that was fine. He really seemed to enjoy his interactions with the dolphin. The dolphin seemed much happier and much less abused in the '90s version. So that was a little bit easier to palate. But there was like actually a story to this one where the dolphin was like helpful to the cause, whereas in the original one, it just seemed like the dolphin was in incidental to everything that was going on. I'm going to I'm going to confess something to you. I do not care for dolphins. Neither one of these dolphins made me feel anything at all, like at all. With that said, I did feel horrible that we were both supporting this film knowing the backside of the abuse the dolphins were were, you know, made to entertain they were made to flip they were made to do all the stuff that dolphins shouldn't have to do that that part of it made me sad i i always forget that like the PETA rights really didn't start hammering at animal abuse in films till almost like 1990 i'm surprised that you don't have love for dolphins as like a thing because I do. I, I think dolphins are wonderful. I've always had a fascination with them. They're super, super smart. They seem a little bit more like dogs, where my understanding is that they like interacting with people. They like that training. They like doing tricks and things. It keeps their brains very stimulated. They have very, very sophisticated communication within their own species. Totally understand that. And I think it makes them smug. <laughs> I think it makes them <laughs> smug animals who I don't want to associate with. I love dogs, hate dolphins. I, I see them as like the smaller killer whales, and I know killer whales be assholes, so I just assume dolphins are the same. Yeah, killer whales are dicks. They like to play with their food, and sometimes <laughs> that food is people, so, you know. <laughs> and sometimes Ooh. that food is people, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyways, so I just, I want to put it out there that I did feel bad watching these films, knowing 
the abuse that animals suffer for for entertainment. You know, a Sea World rakes in millions of dollars. It gives license to other countries to farm out and hunt and catch dolphins and bring them in, and that is not cool by any standards. But I, I also want to say that neither one of these movies is really that cool. Uh, the first one, I I mean, I don't think Sandy's a jerk. I do think his dad is expecting a lot from a twelve year old. Like, I don't know what it was like growing up in the 60s, but he had to, like, rebuild his house while his dad went away on business. So, And they kept some of that between the two movies, right? Like, you know, the uncle goes away, Paul Hogan goes away, and he comes back, and he's like, dude, you didn't even do any work on the house. So the storm was was a thing that was consistent. The chores were a thing that was consistent. The town not really loving the dolphin around was consistent. Sandy was consistent. Yeah, he was fairly consistent. Like the, like the name alone was consistent, because these are two <laughs> completely different people. Yes, for sure. I think that, I think that the, I, I had an easy your time buying into the storyline of the of the newer one this kid who's got a chip on his shoulder and he isn't really interested in being there and then he finds a reason to love the space and and the ocean and this animal kind of like turns his life around and he starts building connections with people in a place that, that he didn't want to be and that's a really interesting kind of tale that i think a lot of us can relate to absolutely you make new friends or you go to new places. I don't know why he didn't want sure to be there because the guy's an idiot. It God was damn beautiful. beautiful. It was gorgeous. It's ridiculous. And for a movie that touts the love of grunge music as much as it did, not a lot of grunge. Yeah, exactly none, really. <laughs> zero. A lot of talk yeah. about the Smashing Pumpkins and the Chili Peppers. Zero tunes from either one of those. But like that was the big conflict. I'm going to miss a concert. And I, I mean... Look around you, pal. Uh, it's paradise. Well, I think that that was, I was reading that that was the thing that Elijah Wood specifically brought to the role was his love for those bands. So it didn't really have anything to do with anything really other than he wanted to wear concert tees, I guess, while he was recording this movie. I wonder if Elijah Wood <laughs> is th- thinking back, he's listening somewhere to our little podcast and going, did I really do an interview and say I brought grunge to th- <laughs> it's like i had i had all the red hot chili peppers t-shirts and smashing pumpkins attire i had to wear it on set it'd be great to hear his adult <laughs> rationale for that now elijah wood you seem like a cool dude who does interesting bizarre small things so if you do happen to be listening or somebody lets you know about our dumb little podcast and you want to come on we'd love to have you as a guest <laughs> So I think the 1963 version of Flipper was mostly just to build a TV series out of it. Wow. Was that the idea? Well, because doing uh, doing a little bit of background on it, it looks like the kid who played Sandy did go on to play the kid named Sandy in the TV series that spawned like the very next year. There was a 1990s Flipper TV series as well, and uh, Jessica Alba was in that one. Flipper has a long history. I don't know if this happened in your house. I'm fairly certain it didn't. But when you watch the 1963 version of Flipper, did somebody come into your home and start singing the Flipper theme song over and over and over (laughs) like it was a cherished memory? No. Because my wife sure did. And I don't understand where she got that. I live alone, and that song has been stuck in my head since I watched that stupid movie, and I'm, like, really annoyed about it. I don't know what the direction was when they started recording that song, but it seemed like, no, no, uh, just be more annoying when you sing. Could you be more nasal? Could there be more of you? More adults that sound like children. No, we don't want to hire children. Your best imitation as an adult of a child. Go. The lyrics are terrible. The stupid music is terrible. How long they played the song through the movie was terrible. The fact that they had to re-up it in the new one was terrible. I hated all of it. Oh, just the worst song in the world. It's the worst. And now it's stuck in my head again because we're talking about it. Oh, sometimes I hate this podcast, Jay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Honestly, the first flipper, I didn't mind 
sitting through the song for as long as it was. It was long, but it felt like, I don't know, I was seeing something nostalgic for nostalgic purposes. I guess. And I was like, okay, sure. When it popped up in the Elijah Wood version, and it wasn't covered by the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> I was a little concerned. And, and not to mention, like, Elijah Wood being the weirdest hustler all of a sudden with, like, a cigar in his mouth. Yeah. Which was pretty funny because Paul Hogan then made him smoke a bajillion cigars. I thought it was a lot of fun. Why does everybody want to murder dolphins so badly in these movies? That's what I really want to know. Like, why murder dolphins? Because I guess they needed to have some sort of conflict. Like, that's literally the only thing I can think of. In the first one, I sort of got it. Okay, they're stealing the fish and there's a fish problem. I get it. Like, sure. the fish are dying and all the right fish, the dolphins are eating. Because, you know, they're dolphins and they need to eat. I mean, that was a really weird ending to that movie. Because the moral of Flipper 1963 is... Humans and dolphins can live in peace. You don't have to kill a dolphin. Right. Even yes. if it's Flipper. <laughs> because that is the worst dinner conversation talk ever. A bit like, well, you got to kill dolphins because we're fishermen and they steal the fish. Even Flipper? Yep. Even Flipper. Like, this is... And I thought it was going to go down some, like, old yellow roads. They had some bizarre conversations at that dinner table. Like, when the dad <laughs> comes home and yells at the kid, and then the resolution to the conflict between the parents is, well, I'm a fisherman, so I got to make sure I beat fisherman things into my fisherman's son. And she goes, yep. Men don't talk like that. And then they both smile at each other, and I assume go to bed to have sex. Because, like, what else is going to happen at that point? <laughs> None of the dialogue in that movie made any goddamn sense. None of the decisions made any sense either. The dolphin gets harpooned, and somehow the kid who harpooned the dolphin passes out by doing nothing? So they have to rush him to the hospital. No, 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 no. He smacked his head into coral. Did he? Did he, though? Did he? Because I watched it three times. There would have been a lot more blood, but it was 63. And that's what they were trying to convey. There is no way that he smashed his head into that coral. He kind of bumped it haphazardly as if falling slowly because water. And, like, that really bugged me. So then all of a sudden this kid grabs a shotgun to take to the ocean... <laughs> <laughs> to swim down to shoot the dolphin? What was the thought process there? Everyone was grabbing guns to go and shoot these dolphins. He didn't want the dolphin to suffer because he's a fisherman's kid. And that's what you learn is you don't let animals suffer. So he was going out with his old pal, the 12-gauge shotgun, to go take care of the dolphin who had been speared. And then I guess had a change of heart. I don't really understand what change. Well, the thing that seemed to change is that the dolphin was in prime shooting location. Oh yeah, 100%. Instead of being at the bottom of the ocean. Oh yeah, you could not miss this dolphin. So so the dolphin wasn't at the bottom of the ocean where your 12 gauge shotgun wouldn't have worked at all and at also all. would probably have taken your shoulder completely off you dumb 12 year old. <laughs> but now the dolphin is like kind of beached and sitting there in prime location for you to, you know, end its suffering or whatever and then you're like, oh wait, I can see it clearly above the ground. I'm just like this dolphin. I need to save its life. It made no sense. None of the motivation made any sense in this movie. I at least in the remake, it made a little bit more sense because you just had a guy who just liked being a dick. It didn't matter what his motivation was, so he got to be the bad guy without motivation. He was just a jerk. Well, his, his whole motivation was money. Exactly. Because he would do anything for money, including dump all the toxins into the ocean, which was a great little eco nod because in the original, they have the red plague or whatever that has killed all the, all this the red tide. Yeah. And then in this one, it's like, well, yeah, obviously someone's poisoning and that's why the fish are going away. Uh, and then they got to make those, I don't know, jello shots for the <laughs> dolphin that, that saved the dolphin's life from literal hazardous waste. Don't know what that is, but we need some of that. <laughs> and I think his only motivation was money. And that was like fine for a kid's movie. His paying customers didn't like the dolphins because they're idiots. And they're like, oh, the dolphin got fish. I want fish. 
shoot the dolphins. Nobody really needed to have strong motivations in either of these two movies. That didn't seem to be the point of either of these two movies. Performance also didn't seem to be the point. Like, the point of the remake really seemed to be that bug at the end of the movie just before the credits start, which is, you know, if you want to help with uh, dolphin conservation, here's a phone number to call. That seemed to be the point. Yeah, but we've already bought a ticket. To watch this dolphin suffer. Yes, exactly. But that seemed to be the point, right? Was make you fall in love with dolphins, which clearly didn't work on you. Uh, and and then here's a place that you can spend your money to make sure dolphins are okay. That seemed to be the purpose to me. And in that regard, I feel like the second one especially did a half-decent job. I, I enjoyed Flipper as a character. I thought he was super fun. He reminded me a lot of, like, having a puppy around or something. He just seemed to, like, to be really enjoying himself and, like, flopping around and, like, flipping on his back for belly scratches and stuff. Like, I don't know. It seemed fine. Certainly not in the original one. But it also seemed like the original one was just looking for ways to, like, get itself to 90 minutes. Because especially in that one section where, where all the kids show up to see, you know, how trained Flipper is. They do a very extended montage of him just, like, throwing stuff into the water and the dolphin bringing it back. That was ridiculous. It was like, let me show you all the tricks my dolphin knows. Give me that. Inside of that, there was also a lot of, like, reusing of footage. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, I did. It was really obnoxious and very obvious and seemed only to bolster the running time of the film to get it to, like, you know, not that 90-minute magic actual film mark. I just hated the first one, dude. I hated it so much. <laughs> it was hard to watch. It felt long. It felt like it was six hours long. Speaking of the first one... I want to talk, oh my God, I don't even understand you, man. It was 97 minutes. It was not, it was so short. It was so painful. I had to watch it in four different sittings because I kept, my brain kept wandering. I kept picking up my phone. Oh my God. <laughs> it's awful. All right. I want to, I want to talk about the other marine life in this film because is it just me or did they literally throw a child in the water with a tiger shark? Yeah. It certainly looked like that. Not just one, two tiger sharks. Because as far as I'm concerned, they threw a kid in with one of the top predators of the ocean. I may not love dolphins or porpoises. I know a shitload about sharks. And tiger sharks are possibly the most dangerous right underneath bull sharks. Tiger sharks have these teeth that work like saws with one bite they could like sever your leg. And at one point, that tiger shark sure as hell was close to that kid before the dolphin came in and punted that shark away. I don't know what it was. The safety standards on Flipper sucked. There's only a couple shots in that sequence where I was like, okay, that looks like a composite or like there was a computer involved. Like the rest of it really did look like either forced perspective or some like weird in-camera tricks. It was when all the dolphins were rushing at the shark. Oh yeah. And you've got that one shot of like six or seven of them all coming towards. I was like, okay, that doesn't look real. Well, but yeah. We know that at that point in the 90s, CGI wasn't good enough that they could do a dolphin versus shark fight in a computer. Like it just, it would have looked terrible. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about the dolphins taking care of that tiger shark. I was concerned about like a 12 year old boy in the water with a tiger shark. Uh, that to me just seemed absolutely outrageous. <laughs> Obviously, there were some really bad shots where you knew it was a tank. Yeah, uh, that was not the seabed. It was a pool at one point. Yeah. And then we yeah. went to the 1996 version with Elijah Wood. You put him up against a hammerhead shark. I'm pretty certain there is no history ever of a hammerhead shark attacking a person ever in the so so I was like this is a weird idea for for the big bad to be this hammerhead shark there was at one point real footage of a hammerhead shark did they scar up a real fish did they put that hook somehow in his mouth I don't know it looked painful for the hammerhead shark which is one of the more gentle, if I can say that, sharks in the ocean to be banged up the way it was. 
I felt terrible for that shark. That was also just really unnecessary because, like, they didn't have to have the shark in that sequence to still make the same point, right? Like, the the bad dude was still going to run over Elijah Wood's boat, and he was still going to be kind of stranded in the middle of the ocean alone. Yeah. So Flipper could have just come and saved him the exact same way that he did without needing the shark at all. You did not need that shark. It ended up being this thing where you're like... Oh, yeah, they brought up some, like, evil shark, like, really early in the movie. Is that ever going to be resolved? And then you go, oh, there it is. Oh, and it's over. Okay, and it didn't matter. Like, at least in the first one, the kid's, like, kind of injured. Which, again, I don't know how the original kid with the harpoon gun got injured. And I don't know how the kid at the end got injured with the shark either. As you're watching it on the screen, you're going, okay, so he just, like, passed out for no reason? Nothing touched him? Nothing happened? (laughs) Like, I don't understand why these kids are so fragile in the original. (laughs) Did you you find it anywhere? Like, was this actually shot in the ocean? I don't know. It was really hard to track down any kind of, like, trivia about this movie at all besides the fact that people didn't believe that the kid in the original was actually swimming with the dolphin um, and and that Elijah Wood wanted to wear concert tees. That's like really all I could find. <laughs> I, I mean, I found out some pretty dark trivia that the original Flipper who was in captivity is one of the only known cases. This is assumptive. Uh, one of the only known cases of an animal suicide because he apparently killed himself. <sighs> That's terrible. That's awful. Aren't you glad you just tuned in to listen to the flipper stuff? Oh, God. I mean, it, I, it, look, honestly, I didn't hate the movies. Uh, I found them to be very easy watches. I don't think they're good. I think there is a really good movie in the 1996 version. If you just remove flipper altogether <laughs> and call it like Sandy's Day at the Beach or something. I think there's a really good coming of age story there. Uh, but I don't think the dolphin added to it. If you really want to watch a marine animal film where like, yes, the marine animal is trained and it's awful and the treatment is horrible. We know all this with 2020 eyes. We can go to blackfish and know all of this. I would still say like, go back to free Willy because it's a better film. There had been two free Willy movies before flipper came out. I feel like they went, Oh, what have we got in the bank? Oh, we could just do a movie about dolphins because, you know, uh, whale movies are hot right now. And and I'm pretty disappointed because Elijah Wood, one of his first films was the, the adventures of Huck Finn. And I saw that in theaters and I've seen it recently and it's a dark version of Huck Finn. And it's a really good role for Elijah Wood. And he was supposed to come back and be Huck Finn again in the Disney Tom and Huck movie. But didn't happen because he was filming Flipper. So (laughs) Flipper ruined the Tom and Huck movie. I'm not saying ruined, ruined. They got Brad Renfro, which was fine. But I think it would have been a lot of fun to watch Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Elijah Wood running around as Tom and Huck as a sequel to The Adventures of Huck Finn. Yeah, sure. (laughs) I'm adding it to the list. The Adventures of Huck Finn is going to the list. I can guarantee at some point there was an old Huckleberry Finn movie. I'm just going to keep adding things. Look, pandemic's never going away. I'm just going to keep adding movies. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of the pandemic, I was reading that one of the first movies that's supposed to come out is Mulan and then Tenant uh, in July. And they've only pushed Tenant by two weeks. And I got to say, man... I'm living in Vancouver, which is like, seems pretty okay as far as like the whole pandemic thing is going, you know, knock on wood. Sure. I don't know that I'm going to go to a theater for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't want to be in confined places with people unless they're kind of in my bubble. And I don't know why you would want to test the waters uh, with big, expensive tentpole movies like Mulan and Tenet. Well, I got to say that I'm very disappointed with the movies they have been releasing on VOD. Well, Trolls was great. Trolls was <laughs> fine. Scoob was a disaster. And then this new Artemis Fowl movie I'm hearing is even worse. Yeah, apparently it's bad. But what did we say? Look, we got a, we got a major podcast about movies here studios listen to us now's the time to fix your movies yeah because you have time to do it i don't know what you're thinking this is such a rare occurrence for artists to have more time to finish their art if you're not taking advantage of that you really should be (laughs) send it out to some people 
hey, what do you think of this cut? Yeah, it's never done. It's just kind of good enough or you run out of time. That's always what happens with these things. With any creative endeavor, really, that's like got a release date or or needs to be released somewhere publicly. Like you just you just run out of time. You're never done. So take advantage. I hope you're taking advantage. Major motion pictures, send us a cut. Yeah. <laughs> and we will we'll look at it. We will look at it and we will give you feedback and real notes. And we will tell you the story points that suck. Absolutely. We'll do it for free. Free the first time. We'll even sign NDAs and not put copies on the internet. We promise. One for free. <laughs> then the rest of them um, can't help you. Dear Marvel, <laughs> please send us Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird to think that that we've we're basically a year since we've had a Marvel movie? Gross, man. It's gross. Given that we usually get two to three of them a year, pretty consistently for the past six, seven, eight years. And it's also weird to know that the last Marvel movie we got in a theater uh, was a Sony Marvel movie. <laughs> and not very good. And it wasn't very good, and I stand by it. It was a crappy, crappy film. I don't like it. Don't like it. So that's all we're doing now on this podcast day is we we talk about a movie that we either liked or didn't like, and then we just relate it back to either DC or Marvel. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we have to... Uh, we. <laughs> We're going to have to do some uh, some digging on some old Marvel movies. The original Captain America versus the first Avenger Captain America. <laughs> and, and, and the original Fantastic Four versus Fantastic Four. Just to get our fix of superhero silliness. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, we're going to have to do something, man. I think maybe the rule's going to be moving forward that you don't get to pick movies for a bit. <laughs> also, that is a good rule. That is a good rule of thumb. Next time on We Saw a Thing. We're taking on some racism in next week's episode. A classic from the 60s starring Hollywood heavy hitters. Sidney Poitier, Catherine Hepburn, and Spencer Tracy. And then the remake with Zoe Saldana, Bernie Mac, and Ashton Kutcher. We Saw a Thing is hosted by Jay Kennedy and Chris Shapcott. Produced by Shotcuts Media. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and check our show notes for links to our social media and credits and leave a review on Apple Podcasts.